Hey everyone, and welcome back to Science Wonders. Today, we're blasting off on a cosmic adventure to explore the universe's mind-blowing wonders. Buckle up, because we're about to shatter some ideas you might have about space. The sun is actually green. The idea that the sun is actually green might seem counterintuitive, but here's the science behind it. Firstly, sunlight is a combination of all the colors of the rainbow, each with a specific wavelength. Our eyes perceive these different wavelengths as distinct colors. Secondly, our atmosphere acts like a giant filter. It scatters short wavelengths of light, such as blue and violet, more efficiently than longer wavelengths, such as red and yellow. It is this scattering that makes the sky appear blue. Thirdly, the sun actually emits a broad spectrum of light, with a peak intensity in the green wavelength. So, while we see the sun as yellow because of the way our atmosphere scatters light, if we could observe it from space, without any atmospheric interference, it would appear predominantly green. While it might be surprising, the sun being green highlights the fascinating interplay between light, our atmosphere, and human perception. There are planets that orbit two stars. Did you know that these planets are called circumbinary planets and they defy the traditional view of planets orbiting a single star? Here's what we know about these planets. Instead of one sun, these planets orbit two stars that are locked in a gravitational dance around each other. Circumbinary planets typically reside in a stable orbit further out from the two stars compared to any potential planets orbiting the individual stars themselves. The Goldilocks Zone. This zone refers to the region around a star where conditions are favorable for liquid water to exist, potentially supporting life. For circumbinary planets, the habitable zone might exist in a specific range within the system, where temperatures are neither too hot nor too cold. The exact formation process for these planets is still being explored, but scientists believe they might arise from the same protoplanetary disk of gas and dust that gives birth to stars. Just like single star planets, circumbinary planets can come in various sizes and compositions. Some might be rocky like Earth, while others could be gas giants like Jupiter. Living on a circumbinary planet might experience dramatic swings in temperature and radiation depending on its position relative to the two stars. However, some scientists believe certain configurations could still harbor conditions suitable for life. Circumbinary planets are a relatively new discovery, and astronomers are constantly learning more about them. Their existence broadens our understanding of planetary systems and the variety of environments that might exist in the universe. Interesting that there's a black hole at the center of our galaxy. Deep within the swirling arms of our Milky Way galaxy lies a dark and mysterious entity, a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star. This cosmic heavyweight holds immense power and continues to fascinate astronomers. Here's a deeper dive into Sagittarius A star. Black holes are regions in space-time with such intense gravity that not even light can escape their pull. Anything that ventures too close, including light particles, photons, gets swallowed by the black hole's immense gravity. How big is Sagittarius A star? While supermassive compared to stellar objects, Sagittarius A star isn't the most monstrous black hole. Its mass is estimated to be around 4.3 million times the mass of our sun. However, it's still incredibly dense, packing all that mass into a region no larger than our solar system. We can't directly observe Sagittarius A star because it doesn't emit any light. However, astronomers can detect its presence by studying the behavior of objects around it. Stars near the galactic center exhibit highly elliptical orbits, moving at incredibly high speeds. These extreme motions suggest the presence of a massive, invisible object at the center, influencing their trajectories. Observations reveal a swirling disk of hot gas surrounding Sagittarius A star. 
This gas is constantly heated and accelerated as it falls towards the black hole, creating a signature glow detectable in radio waves and infrared light. There's still much to learn about Sagittarius Asta and black holes in general. Astronomers are using powerful telescopes and sophisticated computer simulations to probe these enigmatic objects and unlock the secrets they hold. The upcoming event Horizon Telescope Observations promise to provide the first-ever direct image of the black hole's event horizon, the point of no return for anything that crosses it. Sagittarius Asta serves as a powerful reminder of the unseen forces shaping the universe and the ongoing quest for knowledge about these extraordinary phenomena. Okay, it's shocking, but stars can eat each other. Stars aren't always solitary giants. Sometimes, they become cosmic cannibals. Here's how stars can devour each other. This phenomenon occurs in binary star systems, where two stars are gravitationally bound and orbit each other. It all depends on the star's lifespans. Stars with different masses have varying lifespans. A more massive star burns its fuel faster and reaches the end of its main sequence life, hydrogen fusion stage, earlier than its companion. After exhausting its core hydrogen, the larger star swells into a red giant. If the stars are close enough, the red giant's expanding outer layers can engulf its smaller companion. The red giant starts siphoning gas from its smaller companion. This stolen fuel can reignite fusion in the red giant's outer shell and contribute to its growth. There are a couple of ways this stellar feast can play out. If the red giant engulfs the smaller star completely, the stolen gas can fuel further expansion and potentially lead to the red giant exploding as a supernova. In some cases, the red giant might not completely swallow its companion, but instead slowly siphon off its mass over a long period. This can leave behind a white dwarf or even a neutron star orbiting the bloated red giant. This stellar cannibalism can significantly alter the binary system. The eaten star loses mass and its evolution is disrupted. The eater star, meanwhile, becomes more massive and might change its own fate depending on the amount of material it acquires. Studying stellar cannibalism helps us understand the complex life cycles of stars and the diverse outcomes of binary interactions. It's a fascinating reminder of the dynamic nature of the universe and the intricate dance between gravity, fusion, and stellar evolution. There are galaxies larger than our Milky Way. The Milky Way might seem like a vast cosmic metropolis, but it's just one among billions of galaxies in the observable universe. Here's a deeper dive into the giants that dwarf our own galaxy, these behemoths, known as supergiant galaxies, contain hundreds of billions or even trillions of stars, far exceeding the Milky Way's estimated 200 to 400 billion stars. Here are some examples. Andromeda Galaxy, M31, our closest galactic neighbor, Andromeda, is a giant spiral galaxy with an estimated 1 trillion stars. It's so big that on a clear night, with the naked eye under dark skies, you can see its faint glow. I see 1101. This elliptical galaxy holds the title of the most massive galaxy discovered so far, containing potentially hundreds of trillions of stars. It's a behemoth residing billions of light years away. Astronomers use various techniques to estimate the size of galaxies. Firstly, Stellar population, the number of stars within a galaxy, is a key indicator of its size. Astronomers can estimate the total stellar mass by studying the galaxy's overall brightness and the distribution of different stellar types. Secondly, rotation curves. Galaxies rotate, and the speed of their rotation is influenced by the total mass they contain. By measuring the rotational speeds of stars and gas at different distances from the galactic center, scientists can infer the galaxy's total mass distribution and estimate its size. 
These galactic giants continue to be a source of fascination for astronomers. Future telescopes and research efforts will likely reveal even more about their formation, composition, and role in the grand scheme of the universe. The existence of galaxies far larger than our own highlights the vastness and diversity of the cosmos, reminding us that our Milky Way is just a small piece of a much grander story. We live in a bubble of space. Imagine Earth nestled within a giant, invisible bubble in space. That's not science fiction, it's our reality. We live in a region called the Local Bubble, a fascinating feature shaped by the explosive history of our galactic neighborhood. The Local Bubble is a vast cavity of hot, low-density gas that spans roughly 1,000 light-years in diameter. It's a region with a lower density of gas compared to the surrounding interstellar medium, the space between stars filled with gas and dust. So, how did it form? The local bubble is believed to be the product of a series of supernovae, the explosive deaths of massive stars that erupted millions of years ago. The shockwaves from these colossal explosions swept through the interstellar medium, clearing out gas and dust and creating the cavity we now inhabit. Interesting that the local bubble is not completely empty. It contains a thin, hot gas with a temperature exceeding a million degrees Celsius. This gas is too hot for most star formation to occur within the bubble itself. However, the bubble's edge might play a role in triggering star formation in the denser clouds surrounding it. Our solar system is located roughly halfway between the center and the edge of the local bubble. The bubble's influence on our solar system is still being explored, but it might play a role in shaping the environment around us and the types of cosmic rays that reach Earth. The existence of the local bubble highlights the dynamic nature of our galaxy. It's a reminder that even seemingly empty space is constantly being sculpted by the birth and death of stars, shaping the environment for future generations of celestial objects. By studying the local bubble, we gain a deeper understanding of the forces that govern star formation, the evolution of interstellar space, and our place within the grand story of the universe. Did you know? There's a great wall in space. Imagine a wall so big it dwarfs everything you can see with the naked eye. That's the Great Wall. Formerly called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, this enormous structure is a filament of galaxies, a vast concentration of galaxies stretching billions of light years across space. Estimates suggest the Great Wall is a staggering 10 billion light-years long, 1.5 billion light-years wide, and 150 million light-years thick. Just to put that in perspective, our Milky Way galaxy is only about 100,000 light-years across. How the hell did it form in space? The exact formation process of the Great Wall is still under investigation, but scientists believe it's a result of large-scale structure formation in the early universe. Here are some potential factors. Gravity. Over vast stretches of time, gravity pulled together vast clouds of gas and dark matter, leading to the eventual formation of galaxies and the filamentary structure we see today. Cosmic dance. The universe is constantly expanding, but within that expansion, there are regions of denser and less dense matter. The Great Wall might represent an area where immense gravity caused a large overdensity of galaxies. By the way, astronomers discovered the Great Wall by studying the distribution of gamma ray bursts, GRBs, extremely energetic explosions from distant galaxies. By analyzing the locations of these GRBs, scientists were able to map out a vast concentration of galaxies, revealing the Great Wall's immense scale. There's still much to learn about the Great Wall. Astronomers are using powerful telescopes and sophisticated computer simulations to probe its structure, composition, and place within the cosmic web the vast network of filaments and voids that makes up the large-scale structure of the universe. 
The Great Wall serves as a humbling reminder of the universe's immense scale and the ongoing quest to understand its mysteries. It's a testament to the power of gravity and the awe-inspiring structures that can arise from cosmic interactions. The universe is probably infinite. This is one of the most mind-boggling questions humanity has ever pondered. The vastness of space stretches our comprehension, and the idea of an infinite universe is both thrilling and challenging to grasp. Here's a dive into what we know, and what we don't, about the universe's potential infinity. When we talk about the universe, it's important to distinguish between the observable universe and the entire universe. The observable universe is the portion of the universe that we can potentially see or detect, limited by the speed of light and the age of the universe. It's a vast bubble roughly 93 billion light years in diameter, but that's just a tiny fraction of what might exist beyond. Current observations and cosmological models suggest the universe might be infinite. Here's why. Flat geometry, measurements of the universe's curvature suggest it's relatively flat. If the universe were finite and curved in on itself, like a sphere, it would have a positive curvature. An infinite universe, on the other hand, would tend towards flatness. Cosmic inflation, the prevailing theory of the Big Bang posits a period of rapid expansion in the universe's very early moments called inflation. If inflation occurred infinitely in all directions, it could explain the vastness and uniformity of the observable universe. The question of the universe's infinity remains a captivating mystery. It's a testament to the vastness of space and the limitations of our current knowledge. As we continue to explore the cosmos, we might one day unlock the secrets of infinity or discover a mind-blowing alternative that challenges our current understanding. The important takeaway is that the universe is full of wonder and continues to surprise us. The quest to understand its ultimate nature is a compelling journey that pushes the boundaries of human knowledge. The speed of light isn't absolute. While Einstein's theory of relativity established the speed of light in a vacuum as a constant, there's a nuance to consider. The speed of light isn't absolute in all situations. Here's how it works. In a perfect vacuum, empty space devoid of matter, light travels at its constant speed, which is approximately 299,792,458 meters per second. This is the baseline for light speed. However, light can interact with gravity. When light travels through a region with strong gravity, like near a massive star or black hole, its path can bend. This bending doesn't necessarily change the speed of light itself, but it affects the overall direction of its travel. Imagine a marble rolling on a flat surface, no gravity. That's light in a vacuum. Now imagine the surface curves due to a heavy object placed in the center, gravity. The marble will still roll at the same speed, but its path will bend around the object. This analogy represents how gravity bends light's path. Light can also slow down slightly when it travels through a medium like water, glass, or even air, though the effect is very minimal. This happens because the light interacts with the particles within the medium, causing a tiny delay. So, while C remains the speed of light in a perfect vacuum, the concept of absolute speed becomes less clear when gravity or other factors are involved. It's important to note that this doesn't mean we can travel faster than light. The slowing of light in mediums or the bending by gravity doesn't create a loophole for exceeding the speed limit of C in a vacuum. The speed of light in a vacuum is still a fundamental constant in physics. However, understanding how gravity and mediums can influence light's behavior adds a layer of complexity to the concept of absolute speed. It's a reminder that the universe is full of fascinating interactions and that our understanding of reality is constantly evolving. We're still discovering new planets. Our view of the universe is constantly expanding, and so is the number of planets we know about. 
Thanks to advancements in technology, we're in a golden age of exoplanet discovery, planets orbiting stars outside our solar system. Of course, discovering without new methods and tools would be much harder. For example, space telescopes. Powerful telescopes like Kepler, TESS, transiting exoplanet survey satellite, and soon, the James Webb Space Telescope are revolutionizing exoplanet detection. These telescopes can detect the subtle dimming of a star's light caused by a planet passing in front of it, transit method. Other techniques like the radial velocity method, which measures the wobble of a star caused by a planet's gravity, also contribute to the discovery hall. The newly discovered planets come in all shapes and sizes. We found rocky planets like Earth, gas giants larger than Jupiter, and even hot Jupiters, scorching gas giants orbiting incredibly close to their stars. This diversity challenges our understanding of planetary formation and opens doors for the possibility of life existing beyond our solar system. A key focus of exoplanet research is finding planets within a star's habitable zone, the region where liquid water, a crucial ingredient for life as we know it, could exist on the planet's surface. With each new discovery, we inch closer to potentially finding a planet with conditions suitable for life. The quest to discover new planets is not just about finding another Earth, it's about unveiling the vastness and richness of our universe. Each new discovery is a piece of the puzzle, helping us understand our place in the grand cosmic scheme. We are truly living in an exciting age of exploration, and the future holds the promise of even more groundbreaking discoveries. Those are just a few of the mind-blowing facts about our universe. Space is a place of wonder, mystery, and endless possibilities. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. What are some of the astronomy facts that amaze you the most? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stellar content.